Okay, so uh, one of the pillars, and I think probably one of the most important, is uh, tribe. Which um, when I sat down with Rob um, and he said tribe, I went, yeah, like we kind of have this already. Um, we're, we're very lucky in the sense that um, we've been brought together and a lot of our little freediving community tribe has been brought together through a common love, a common passion, and we've built it to the point where it's quite, quite a big group. But <clears throat> in terms of humans, I think we've always needed this. And I think in some respects, community and tribe has been lost a little bit in our 21st century world. We get so introspective and so like, okay, well, I go to work and then I go home and then, you know, we, we don't quite get the connection that we're needing in this in this 21st century world where our brains are overworked, we're quite often undernourished <laughs> with our diet, we don't do as much exercise, and then we don't connect with people. So yeah. I think this is where this, this five pillars is super important. And this one in particular is a biggie because um, I think, you know, from, uh, you know, way back when, um, if you were ostracized from the tribe, it basically meant certain death. Yeah. Um, you weren't protected by the tribe, you didn't have that social connection, you didn't have a mate, you didn't, you know, reproduce all of these sorts of things and then you were ostracized from the group and that saber-toothed tiger came and ate you because <laughs> you didn't have the protection of the tribe. But I think the thing is, is our brains still operate the same way. Yeah. So if you don't have a tribe, if you don't uh, connect with people regularly, you don't have friends, you don't have a good support network, you don't have family to support you either, I think that's you know a, a really tough thing to deal with as a human, um, and we have this thing in front of us. This is actually called a free diving buoy, um, and basically you've got handles that you can hold on. So that's your like your little support network. So you could almost think of it like you know these are the these are the kind of people that you can kind of hang on to as well, and you've got people with you. So there's at least four spots here. Underneath you attach the line which goes deep into the ocean. So you you dive down on one breath. And then you always have, in freediving, the number one rule is you never freedive alone. So you always have a safety or a buddy. So that buddy watches you on your way back up, comes down, makes sure you're all right. Um, so in a lot of ways, this is... This is a fantastic little metaphor yeah, for tribe. Yeah, yeah. A, a I bit think of a, even the handles on the side where you can hold on, you know, the, your tribe really is a, a crux of support. And, and as you said, you brought up a couple of great points, which was mm. that alone you know is never how we've been and this modern world is mm. so um can be so fractured and and we lose that and it sounds really traditional and really sort of sometimes old-fashioned but i think the reason that it's it's been a, a a crux of our of our species is because that 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 it works mm. i think um you can recreate it in the modern world in terms of you know there's some you can have online communities and and you know friendship groups in in sports but you know, the family is is still a really important one. Some families don't function very well, and so you can you can use your friends as fla as family. But but the the undeniable truth is that we have evolved at, in villages and in groups, mm. and those relationships are so important to our well being. Mm. We reflect on ourselves and we reflect on our own value, based mm. on how these other people in the relationships mm. that we have treat us and and think about mm. us, and we know that this. Um, brings in the, the psychological component in terms of childhood trauma and how we reflect on those experiences, reflects some, or, or changes the way we think about ourselves. Again, not getting too deep, but mm. but our tribe is a, is an essential part of well-being. Um, relationships, I think, is a complex one, mm. and it does bring into into um, into focus the, the psychology of it all, mm. but. Um, but, but our partners have to sometimes live with someone with depression, mm. which is another interesting challenge. That's the, I suppose, um, you know, for, for anyone who may be watching this now or, or searching, um, it's, it's, it's quite important, I think, to bring in, if you have a partner, to bring in your partner into this, or if you have uh, your father or your mother who's trying to help you, like, because what, what I found was I reached for the people closest to me and they didn't have the answers because they'd never experienced it. Yeah. And so that can be 
that can be very disheartening as well because then all of a sudden you go like, oh, this person that I hold as one of my nearest and dearest, they've never struggled with it. What's wrong with me? Um, and so, you know, I, I suppose even reaching out because we know that so many people suffer from this and you shouldn't suffer in silence and all of those things that are out there at the moment, which, you know, um, it's okay to not be okay. All of these types of things are good and they're good discussion starters because, you know, it's not something... It's not taboo anymore. It's not like, like you, you, you should reach out. And the one thing that I didn't struggle with, I was actually okay with reaching out. I didn't like the fact that I had to, but I did in my search for what was wrong, I would ask friends, I would ask family, like what, what you know, have you struggled with this? And, and a lot of people hadn't. Mm. But um, I know a lot of my friends, and unfortunately I know people who, you know, took their lives, um, they, they simply, uh, didn't they couldn't reach out or maybe didn't have people that that they felt they could reach out to I don't know but it's a it's a really sad state of affairs when you get to the point where you just go I'm out I, yeah. I cannot deal with this thing anymore it's too much I don't want to be here yeah so it's suicide prevention isn't it is part of all this and it's an enormous mm. problem I think um from a doctor's perspective, we know that we're bad at predicting um, suicide, which suggests that it possibly is an impulsive decision. Mm. So when I work with my patients, and um, I like to really encourage that relationship to your future self. You know, if you love and respect your future self, you know, you in the future, what mm. will you be like, and what will you mm. be, what will you have achieved, and mm. that can really, I, I find help there's mm. protective factors like family and kids mm. and goals but it's um it's a difficult problem but yeah i think mm. that the fabric of our relationships around us is is, is mm. has got to be um one of the strongest things that prevents that mm. i think we know that social isolation is a risk factor for mm. many things like mm. heart disease mm. and cancer and mm. and absolutely mental health mm. so social isolation is foreign to our dna um, it's not good for us, and, and you've got to you've got to try and manufacture a way to mm. build a tribe around you. And, and I think, you know, we're a couple of blokes, um, and we, we know that, in particular with suicide, is that seventy five percent or somewhere around that marker we've heard is is are men who, who take their own lives, and it's not exclusive to men, um, but we we're men, so we've got to talk from that point of view. But what it seems is that um, women seem to have uh, developed the ability or have that innate ability to be able to reach out to friends and talk about this type of stuff in their little social networks, which is really good. But what I don't think men, because, you know, and I, I catch myself doing it, like my little fella, he falls over and skins his knee and I'm like, come on, bud jump back up, let's get, get into this. Yeah. Um, whereas my little daughter, it's like, oh, darling, are you okay? Let's talk about it. Oh, do you want me to kiss it better? So I think sometimes we do it ourselves to, to boys that then become men that say, well, you know, all of a sudden that grazed knee becomes the yeah. depression um, where they go, oh, I've just got to dust myself off and I'll get through it myself. And, and so it's a r very real problem, especially with men, I think. And, and, you know, even from talking to friends of mine that are firefighters or paramedics, mm. they do say, you know, unfortunately, it's mainly men. Yeah. And when men actually, you know, go through it, it's, it's a horrific scene. Mm. Um, it, it's, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a problem that, you know, I think some of it stems from the inability to talk, but also maybe that, like you were saying, that isolation, that not having a tribe to be able to go, feel comfortable enough to go, this is how I'm feeling, I'm not well, I'm not in a good space. Yeah. Um, and then have that tribe kind of rally around you and say, come on, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll help you through this. That action is such a healing and, and restorative. Mm. If you feel like these emotions are normal, mm. you know, that you're not weak, that you're not broken, mm. um, and that, other people mm. are experiencing the same things mm. and that's an incredibly powerful thing mm. and that's why we that's why tribe is is on the is on the five pillars yeah i wanted to touch a bit more on the living with someone with depression mm. and i think um my wife particularly should come in here yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um it's a difficult difficult task as i said i think uh, earlier um relate uh, uh depression can be a really 
self-focused uh, condition and so it seems selfish to people around you. Um, I don't think most people who have depression think they're being selfish but it can be all-consuming. Um, living with someone with depression is a, is a steep learning curve um, and as Adam said earlier I think often the best role to take is to just listen. Um, and the tribe can do this too with the friends and family who are suffering. It doesn't have to be an intimate relationship, but any relationship with someone who's suffering, uh, having a, a you know a, a willing ear, you know, being able to listen and nod and normalise the experience of depression. Um, and I like to blame the world um, in a way. <laughs> you know, modern world. It's an easy so, target. <laughs> yeah, a modern world. The systems are broken, like we said, there's the social media, there's the social isolation, yeah. there's the food that we eat, there's the, mm. the you know, caveman and woman would not have worked mm. 10 hours a day. Mm. There's no way they work mm. 10 hours a day. Um, so why are we doing it to ourselves? Five mm. days a week, come on. Yeah. Three, two to three mm. is, a, is a nice sweet spot. Mm. <laughs> if, you, if we can manage, not everyone's that lucky, you know, mm. yeah. but we know that, that our modern world, our modern systems are partly to blame here and it's nice to sort of shift some of that away from ourselves so we don't feel quite as broken and damaged and mm. I think um, that's, that's all part of the strike. Mm. So I suppose, it very, very similar to, you know, I remember listening to Tony Robbins' CD once, you know, and this is, he's, he's sales but, you know, personal power and all that sort of stuff. But a, one of the first CDs I ever listened to was very powerful for, for me. And he said basically, you know, the old adage was knowledge is power. And um, he said, that's absolute rubbish. He said, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. It's what you do with that knowledge that counts. And he's all like, take massive action, you know, like, but he, he it's a super good point. Like, you know, you may, take all these five pillars and go I have that knowledge but if you don't action any of it nothing will change if so oh, there's another old adage if nothing ever changes nothing ever changes so if you're now in the grips of depression and you're you're not seeing a way out or anxiety or whatever it is that you're dealing with you know if you don't take any action on this stuff so if you go like oh that tribe sounds and I know the feeling like I've been there where you're just like oh tribe yeah I've heard this before yeah but it's probably not going to help me but if you don't take that that action, if you don't go like, you know, I still remember when I first moved to, to this particular area called the Sunshine Coast, I had no friends. And for me, I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, as a guy, it's hard to kind of go up to another guy and go, hey man, you look like a nice dude, yeah. Give me your number, they'll be like, uh, how about not? Um, so I just joined a sporting club and instantly had 30 mates yeah. and instantly had a tribe. So, you know, I think it's just about taking action in some small way in all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and often I find the first few steps, you have to really force it. Mm. If you're in the grips, then mm. you really have to fake it. Mm. And um, one of my mentors said to me a lot when I was very depressed and trying mm. to be a doctor or trying to learn mm. to be a doctor was that, you know, it's okay sometimes to fake it till you make it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. a little bit, you know, sometimes forcing that smile or forcing yourself to, to yeah. go to the footy club and sign up yeah. or to, 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 to make some steps towards doing some physical activity or to force yourself to really focus on your diet, uh, unplug from the unconscious yeah. eating and really look at that. If you fake it, eventually it start, your body starts to follow suit and you start to feel a little better. Mm. Um, we don't want to be pretend all the time, but, no, but, but, but it's a mechanism but, to get over that hurdle. Yeah, and, and I, I must admit, um, you know, sometimes like when I'm about to dive stupid deep on one breath, um, I'm having negative thoughts. I'm having thoughts that aren't necessarily helpful. But I'll think of something that'll make me laugh, or I'll smile, or I'll giggle. And you know, some of the people that are watching me about to dive, they're like, "What the hell is this guy doing?" Um, and it's not even necessarily the that I'm faking it. I'm just trying to convince myself that I like what I'm about to do, <laughs> even though my brain sometimes is going like, "Well, do we really like that? Like, we go for a fair while without oxygen." <laughs> Um, which is kind of <laughs> pretty helpful to human survival. Um, but so some of that is like just, you know, posture, yeah. um, putting a smile on your face. Um, and you you may just find that the physical um, manifestation in the mental can kind of help. So um, tribe, I think one of the most important, but um, 
yeah, we're now going to get into... Psychology. Psychology. <laughs> this will be fun.